Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Breaking news overnight, a man shot five times. Police say they have a suspect in custody. Sarah Costa joining us live with what led to this gunfire and the latest on the investigation. Plus, a man is in the hospital after police say he was hit by two cars. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. A chilly start to your Sunday morning, 38 degrees. Our Mike Osterhage joins us with your full forecast. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock Sunday, January 12th. Thanks for joining us on this cold morning. Yeah, 38 degrees. Pretty cold. Pretty cold now. Yesterday, gorgeous oh, out there. Oh, it was a beautiful afternoon. We yeah. were lucky. So, Mike, are we going to see a repeat of today? Almost. I think we'll have a couple more clouds hanging around here today. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just beautiful out there. This really, though, isn't that far from where, I, when I say should be, normal temperature. 38 degrees, 40 is the normal right low now, temperature this time Right now, in of the year. morning. Right. And, uh, it, it, which... However you slice it, it's still cold out there and we should have a fantastic sunrise this morning and a lot of freezing readings out there going up by 10 burnings, freezing comfort Kerrville and we may drop down a few more degrees in some places even around Bulverde at 33. So in your backyard, it may actually be down right around freezing. So if you're going in Pleasanton as well. So if you are going uh, to early church services this morning, Make sure you do bundle up 57 degrees at noon, mostly sunny skies. We're going to have partly cloudy skies later on today, so a few more clouds kind of hanging around here. Still a fantastic day. Once again, overall, a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Get outside and enjoy it. Now, things are definitely going to be changing overnight. We're going to get a big return of humidity around here. The next couple of mornings, we're probably going to start with some fog and maybe some mist, drizzle, and it's going to be kind of mild. But... We'll worry about that then. We'll just enjoy today because it's going to be a beautiful day. More on the uh, forecast for the work week and school week is coming up in a couple of minutes. Stephanie. Thank you, Mike. A man was shot five times after someone tried to steal his bike. Now, it happened last night on the city's west side at North Brazos Street and Kaufman. Our Sarah Costa is live at Public Safety Headquarters with what police are saying about this assault. Sarah. Good morning, and Stephanie, that man is fighting for his life this morning after being shot five times. Police say he was sent to University Hospital in critical condition. We are still waiting to hear back for his most current condition. This happening just after 1045 last night on the west side at North Brazos Street and Kaufman. Police say a homeless man was on his bike at the street corner when a man attempted to steal that bike from him. The suspect became angry when the man refused to give up the bike, police say. That's when the suspect pulled a gun and shot the man five times, according to police. The suspect ran off and went to the Tin Barn Saloon, which is nearby the location. Police say they captured the suspect, took him into custody. He will face at least an aggravated assault charge. Now, those charges can change. Investigators say they are still waiting to see what kind of condition the victim ends up in this morning. And if, if, if they're saying if the victim dies, then that suspect will face more intense charges. Live from Public Safety Headquarters, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Max and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Right now, a man is in the hospital with life-threatening injuries after police say that he was hit by two separate vehicles on the south side. SAPD telling us the man is in his 50s. He was hit just before 9 last night at a crosswalk in the intersection of Pleasanton Road and Division Avenue. He was put in an ambulance, taken to Bamsey. Police say the drivers who hit him will not face any charges as of now. It appears to be an accident. Both those drivers stopped and tried to help. SAPD says it appears that the drivers had green lights, but police still investigating if the victim crossed the street early or not. Federal investigators are looking into what forced a small plane to make an emergency landing in Bandera County. It happened just before 6 p.m. last night. That was on Highway 16 at Bear Creek Road. Now, two people were on board at the time and both walked away unharmed. It is still unknown what caused that emergency landing. However, officials say the plane's wing did collide with a road sign as it landed. Now, according to the FAA, the aircraft is a Piper plane registered to a San Antonio charter service. In your morning headlines in the Philippines, a volcano south of the capital is causing tremors and spewing ash into the air. Authorities have ordered the evacuation of about 8,000 residents and canceled flights to and from the region. The volcano spewed ash that generated nearly a mile high plume and triggered ashfall in nearby communities. And people in Puerto Rico picking up the pieces this morning after a 5.9 magnitude quake hit just yesterday. Thousands still without power today after Puerto Rico has had multiple tremors throughout the week. That includes a 6.4 magnitude quake that hit Tuesday that ended with one man dead. It destroyed homes and left most of the island without power.
Severe storms that swept across portions of the U.S. are being blamed for the deaths of at least 11 people. And it was a close call for a family in spring that's near Houston. High winds from storms yesterday toppled a neighbor's tree onto their home. A couple and their 10 month old baby were inside. The roof was crushed and kitchen damaged, but they all got out of that damaged house and they are safe. And in Dallas, a high school basketball game turns to a nightmare after a teen was shot in the chest. Gunfire erupting during the game last night. Authorities say that the teen was rushed to the hospital, now in critical condition after having to undergo surgery. A Dallas ISD spokesperson says the victim may be a former student of one of the local high schools. Dallas ISD officer was also taken to the hospital after being grazed by shrapnel during the shooting. She is expected to be okay. Investigators say that the incident stemmed from a fight in the stands during the game. Investigators still working, trying to figure out who exactly is responsible. And the Maynard Independent School District near Austin is out $2.3 million after falling prey to a fishing scam. Now, police say it started in the first part of November and continued through December before the district found out and reported it. They say the phishing email was sent to a lot of people at the school district, and it was a single person that responded. The Federal Bureau of Investigation is looking into it. The Better Business Bureau says business email scams have cost businesses more than $3 billion since 2016. Well, problems with roads, sidewalks, and transportation as a whole. They're issues that people in and around San Antonio see every day. In the news segment, leading essay, Max here. He sits down with leaders of our community, and one of the big topics that Max discussed with Mayor Ron Nirenberg was the city's infrastructure, where we stand, and what's next. Now, the mayor tells me that the city council tripled the amount of resources that the city is putting to basic infrastructure, focusing that money in areas with the highest needs. Neighborhoods that were being left behind for so long finally starting to catch up and in revitalized areas, the topics of bike lanes are a key talking point. But this is a city of 5,000 uh, uh, miles of, of streets and, and sidewalks. So that change doesn't happen overnight, but I will tell you, we are finally gaining ground on the battle for, for safer, more effective infrastructure, and we're doing that because of the work of the city council over the last three years. What we want to do is have bicycle traffic separated from the vehicular traffic, and we need that in areas where we know that there, there would be commuting happening, especially in the urban areas of San Antonio. That's why we had the debate about Broadway. And this is just one of the numerous topics that were discussed in this week's leading essay. You will see all these topics from the mayor throughout shows this week, culminating in a long form piece later today at 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. Now we discussed visions for the future of the Alamo City, crime rates, homelessness, and big ideas for what's next in innovative forms of transportation. We also asked your questions. So you're gonna be able to watch the entire interview on KSAT.com and on our OTT KSAT streaming platform. That is at 8 a.m. So first, you got to stay with us throughout yes. the morning. Uh -huh. 8 a.m. here, we have a long form piece where you know we go over kind of like a broad view of a lot of topics. Yes. And then shout out to our OTT producer, Alyssa, who put the entire interview up on our OTT platform. She threw in That's little, good. yeah, it's amazing. You can watch it. It's, it's a 40 minute interview, but <laughs> we break it up with yes. little infographics. Yes. So it's kind of like a how we got here, what we're doing about the issues right now and then what's next. And it's really cool. I saw some clips of it and it looks like the mayor has a lot of ideas for 2020. Mm -hmm. It's exciting stuff. Yeah, it is. Thanks, Max. <laughs> All right, 608, 38 degrees out. Ooh, it's cold. It's very cold. It's <laughs> very different from yesterday. The San Antonio Spurs are gonna try to get back in the wind column today in Toronto. <laughs> We're gonna have a preview. Did you just clap at the Spurs? Yes. <laughs> get it together. <laughs> just in case they're listening right now. <laughs> and believe it or not, now might be the best time to think about your air conditioning. More on a new EPA mandate that could affect your AC. Mm -hmm. It's like night. now might be a time to buy shorts. Mm. Still. I mean, look, it's 38 <laughs> now, but it's gonna warm That's up. That's true. Well, here in San Antonio, it's you never know what we're gonna get. So right now, exactly 38, but later a little higher. We're gonna take a mic to see what we can expect. Did you make it outside yesterday? Today. I did, and it was beautiful. Gorgeous. I'm hoping for the same thing today. I'll check in with Mike. We'll see. Good morning and welcome back. 612 this Sunday morning and we were just talking 
Really yeah. hoping for another gorgeous day. Like no yesterday. complaints about yesterday. Oh. oh gosh, none at all. What was interesting is even as the sun started going down a little bit, it cooled off kind of quickly. That yes. won't be quite as dramatic uh, later on this evening, but yeah, it's going to be another fantastic day. We'll have a few more clouds hanging around here today, especially uh, later on. But yeah, it's just get out and enjoy it when you have a day news. like this. So nice and cold start this morning. We should have another sunrise just as beautiful as this one. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And there's the. Uh, live cam view over there. So we're just waiting for the sun to pop up right about in there later on this morning. 38 degrees out at the airport, freezing going up I-10 in toward Comfort, Kerrville, Bernie, Tarpley, even Pleasanton is at freezing right now. And again, uh, say New Braunfels, Balverde, close enough to where in your backyard it may actually be freezing. And we, in some cases, will drop down a couple of more degrees in the next few hours. And then we're going to start to warm up very quickly throughout the day. So we'll gain a good probably 30, almost 35 degrees in some cases, getting up into the mid 60s later on today. And as far as water vapor, <clears throat> excuse me, yesterday over there with the dark shade and that kind of tannish shade, that was bone dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. And that's why we had those just intensely blue skies out there. Now the humidity or the moisture, I should say, aloft in the atmosphere and the humidity is starting to come back in here a little bit more. So maybe the milky shade to the sky, a couple of more high level clouds out there. Still a good looking day. And as far as the computer model, it's got a few more clouds in here. One computer model has us a lot cloudier later on this afternoon, I'm kind of leaning toward this one being partly cloudy skies. Like I said, still a good looking day. Then overnight, the clouds really start to make a return as the moisture really starts to make a return in here from the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So we're probably going to be starting off with some fog around the area tomorrow, as well as a little bit of mist and drizzle. And then during the day, there's a chance for a couple of stray showers. It's not going to be a big deal as far as any rain is concerned, but just that chance for a couple of showers around here. And same thing on Tuesday, fog in the morning and then the chance for a few showers. Actually, all week long, you really can't completely rule out a shower or two. It's not like it's going to be a big rain. It's not going to be a big deal, but just one or two of them out there. Humidity is very low, obviously, right now. And those southeasterly winds will continue to pull it in. We're not going to be dealing with much this afternoon, but then overnight, that's when the uh, dew points really start to come up here. And with that extra humidity, of course, just getting pumped on in. That's why we see some of that patchy fog around the area. And it's going to be staying fairly humid. Looks like throughout the, uh, the rest of the week around here with those dew points well up into the upper mid to even upper 60s. We we'll, should see another front come through, though, by late uh, Friday into Saturday. 57 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies and call it uh, mostly sunny, partly cloudy. 65 for a high temperature, just about normal. Nice looking day today and then tomorrow overnight. Into tomorrow, we're going to see a, a lot more in the way of some uh, humidity, clouds, fog tomorrow morning, and some mist and drizzle. Then a shower, like I said, shower or two is possible throughout the day tomorrow. Then we get back up into the uh, mid 70s pretty much all week long. A little bit of a front comes through Thursday. And now it won't be constantly cloudy. There's a little sunshine here and there, but then leaning toward the cloudier side, a shower or two, and then uh, temperatures will drop back down to the 60s by next weekend with another front. Look, I'm just going to go out here and say 38, not ideal, but 60s and 70s into mid-January, late January. Yeah. That is so fantastic. Mild considering what it could be. See, I like the 30. It's January. You do? Well, cool and crisp. Grew up in the snow. I'm good without it. Well, me too, but <laughs> I, I kind of like the cool crisp. I like it every once in a while. Yeah. I like the sit outside, have the sun beaming kind of weather. <laughs> right, like it was yesterday. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> In the 60s, not 70s with the humidity. Mike was like... 60s to 70s and sunny. Go to break that, and then argue about this. Yeah, Mike thinks that you can <laughs> do that thirsty. during the summer. Enjoy the sun during mm, the summer. That, mm, there's sometimes in the summer I'm like, you know what, 110, I'm without that. 616 <laughs> to 38 degrees. A new EPA mandate could affect your home air conditioner. We're going to have more on what you need to know. And Spurs looking for redemption. Can they win tonight against the Raptors of Toronto? Again, important to mention, Toronto no longer has Kawhi. We're going to hear from <laughs> former Raptors teammates on what they think of the Spurs. Next. Good morning and welcome back 620 this Sunday and tonight a perfect time for redemption for the Spurs this evening. Silver and Black back in action. Last time they played though they fell to Memphis on the court and in the standings the Grizzlies now ahead of the Spurs for the eighth seed in the West beating San Antonio 134 to 121. Well Marcus Aldridge made five of nine three pointers. He now has 40 on the season. A new career high for him and once again DeMar DeRozan. 
holding the offensive attack, tying his season-high 36 points. Fun fact, DeMar DeRozan, the first player in Spurs history, recording 10 straight games with 20-plus points, all while shooting 50% or better from the field. And DeMar, also a fun fact, used to be a Toronto staple. So, former Raptors teammate Kyle Lowry gave his thoughts on DeMar's recent fantastic performance. I think he's just understanding where his spots are, and I think he's just, um, you know, I think he's just getting to his spots and, and, and playing with his uh, his uh, know-how, right? He's not trying to do nothing different, nothing special. He's going to get to his spots, and um, he's playing, playing to his strengths, and uh, he's getting to the free throw line, you know, like he always does, and that's a big part of his game. And DeMar is back in Toronto tonight. That's where the Spurs will be facing the Raptors. Tip-off set for 5 o'clock. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, it is one of the best times of the season. Two more NFL playoff games today. National championship for college football tomorrow. So it's time to talk NFL playoffs. The Titans upsetting the number one seed Ravens last night. And later today, Houston Texans will face the Chiefs in the AFC Divisional Playoffs. Kansas City, the number two seed. Houston, the four seed. So back in week six, the Texans actually won at Arrowhead Stadium 31-24 behind running back Carlos Hyde. He's had a hundred, he had 116 yards and two touchdowns in that game. Hyde topped the 100-yard mark three times this season. He rushed for his career best 1,070 yards, six total touchdowns. His first season with the Texans has been a phenomenal one for him, for sure. His first 1,000-yard rushing season of his entire career. Carlos has been a heck of an uh, addition for this team, for this uh, organization. Um, he's been running hard. He's been doing whatever we ask him to do as an offense, as a, as a, as a team, um, and definitely been, you know, doing his job, you know, to, a, to, this, to his highest. So, uh, you know, I'm blessed to have him as my running back and as a teammate, as a brother, as a friend. Um, and he's definitely improving, and, you know, he's looking forward for the challenge on Sunday. So we have Deshaun Watson, we have MVP, Patrick Mahomes, two fantastic young quarterbacks, and that means conditions are going to play a huge factor. So following a day of snow, mm -hmm. the forecast today in KC calling for partly cloudy skies, a high of 40 degrees. So just about right now what we're looking at here. Arrowhead Stadium, though, fun fact, underground heating system, it keeps the field from freezing. Ah. Kickoff set for 205, and we are going to have a full report. We're going to have the highlights, post-game reaction tonight on Instant Replay. It'll still be cold. It will still be cold, <laughs> but when you're running around, 40 really feels like 65. Yeah. Oh, the fans will be cold. Fans yeah. will be cold. But I'm so excited. We had an amazing upset last night. The Ravens fell to the Titans. Derrick Henry had probably one of the best games, most important game of his career. And today could be another upset. Yeah. Well, we're hoping the Texans will come out on top. Sean yeah. Watson and J.J. Watt, time yeah. to deliver. Yeah. 623, 38 degrees up. And an important part of your AC unit could be going obsolete. We're going to have more of what you need to know on that next. All right, time to take a look at birthdays. First up, we have Andrew rocking that KC hat. Happy birthday, Andrew, 40 years old. You're going to say it, though. Go Texans. Uh, <laughs> cute pick. Welcome to the 40s Club. And this is Jenea, 11 years old. Cute pick. Happy birthday. Remember to keep on sending your birthday pictures to kset.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age if you want. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. Good morning and welcome back. 627 this Sunday morning, and it might be January, but we are already talking air conditioning. And we've been getting a lot of questions about a new EPA mandate that phases out the type of coolant that's used in a lot of AC systems. 12 on your side, Marilyn Morris, on what you should know to keep your cool. Come summer, if the AC isn't humming, that's not cool. And if you don't know what type of refrigerant keeps yours cooling, you should. This stuff, R22, is going to be obsolete. The new year brought a new rule. R22 can no longer be made or imported. It's bad for the environment. The folks at Champion AC are getting questions, and so are we. So here's the deal. The phase-out started years ago. If your unit's 12-plus years old, chances are it's an R22 system. So how can you tell for sure? Okay. This is going to be a little tight to get back here. Look at the sticker. If it says 410A, that's the new stuff, and you're good. If it's says R22, we're talking to you. So if you have an older unit that uses R22, you may be asking, do I now need to go out and buy a whole new HVAC system? The answer is no. Ben Hubbard says keep on using the system you have. If you've taken care of it, maintained it, use it, 
run it into the ground, essentially. But if and when you have a leak and you need R22, it's going to cost you. The repairs are going to skyrocket. That's when it will be time to look at a replacement. No. Bottom line, know what you have and budget for the day the AC goes out. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, at 38 degrees, I'm not too concerned about it right now, but it's good <laughs> not, to be forward thinking. Well, funny, not right now this minute, but my husband was doing work around the house in the afternoon and he put the AC in. I'm like, what are you <laughs> doing? It's January. It's a pretty day. Don't put the AC on. So you never know. You never know. 629, 38 degrees out. And still ahead, President Donald Trump tweeting to Iranians after Iran admitting to shooting down a passenger jet. A man was shot five times last night after a suspect tried to steal his bike from him. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. In just a bit, we'll let you know that victim's condition. Good morning and welcome back. 632 this Sunday morning. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. On this cold Sunday morning, yeah, 38 degrees, much different than yesterday afternoon. Yesterday afternoon, <laughs> I have to say it, because I, I talk to people on the East Coast all the time, and they're always like, oh, it's... It's sleeting, it's in the 20s, it's, it's a high freezing. of 29, right. and I'm like, well, we had a low of 38 today. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been nice. It's been nice, and Mike, you're telling us that this nice weather condition is going to continue? Yeah, we're going to have a few more clouds. It won't be quite as picture perfect as what we had around here yesterday. We already have a few, uh, some high level moisture, so maybe milky shade of the sky, a couple of clouds in the afternoon, but that's sort of split in here. I mean, comparing it to yesterday, because today is going to be really, really darn nice. Yes, it is a cold start. We do have some freezing temperatures. Kerrville right now is at uh, freezing, as is Pleasanton and Carrizo Springs, freezing 38 degrees here in town and not much of a breeze out there right now, so we don't have a wind chill to deal with, thank goodness, and temperatures around the area. We've got uh, 34 over there in Hondo. 30 up the road, like I mentioned, in Kerrville Comfort at 31 and Balverde right at freezing as well. And it may be freezing in your backyard. I mean, we've actually dropped down a little bit just in the past uh, 15 minutes, say, in Balverde. So even in and around New Braunfels, these are just obviously, you know, it's one thermometer out there. So maybe freezing in your backyard. Clear, cold, and then partly cloudy, mid-60s. Still a fantastic day. The humidity is going to begin its return later on this afternoon. Doesn't mean we're going to be getting on the humid side, but overnight we'll see a lot of humidity around here. It's really going to start pumping back in. So that means we're going to have a lot in the way of uh, clouds tomorrow morning, fog, maybe a little bit of uh, drizzle and a shower or two is possible throughout the day. It's not very likely, but just possible 68 for high temperature and pretty much the rest of the week. It's going to be very mild. We'll have low temperatures in the say 60 upper 50s, even the mid 60s at times, and a few showers are possible throughout the week, but then another front moves through just in time for next weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Max. Thank you, Mike. A suspect attempts to steal a man's bike, ends up shooting that man five times. Now all of this happening on the west side, North Brazos Street and Kaufman. Sarah Costa live at public safety headquarters with what police are now saying about this assault. Good morning, Max, and that man was sent to University Hospital in critical condition after being shot five times this morning. He is fighting for his life. This happening just after 1045 last night at North Brazos and Kaufman at the street corner there on the west side. Police say a homeless man was on his bike at that corner when another man attempted to steal his bike from him. The suspect became angry when the man refused to give his bike up. Police say that's when the suspect pulled a gun and shot the man five times. The suspect ran off and went to the Tin Barn Saloon, which is a nearby that location. Police say they ended up f uh, catching up to the suspect and took him into custody. Police say at this time he will face at least an aggravated assault charges. Now those charges could change, investigators say, pending on the status of the victim later this morning. Live from public Public Safety Headquarters. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Max and Leslie, I'm sorry. Thank you, Sarah. Iranian protesters took to the streets after Tehran admitted it mistakenly shot down a Ukrainian passenger jet and killed all 176 people on board. Now, President Donald Trump has tweeted his support for the demonstrators. President Donald Trump tweeted in both English and Farsi, my administration will continue to stand with you. We are following your protests closely and you are inspired by your courage. Ukraine International Airlines Flight 752 crashed Wednesday after takeoff from Tehran's airport. And out of the campaign trail in the 2020 race for the Democratic nomination for president with less than a month until the Iowa caucuses.
Bernie Sanders finding himself at the top of the pack. But there are still three other challengers that are pushing for support. ABC's Rachel Scott has more from the campaign trail in Newton, Iowa. With just three weeks until the Iowa caucuses, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders taking the top spot in a new Des Moines Register CNN poll. I'm asking for your support to help me win the Democratic nomination. And then I am asking for your support to help me defeat the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country. 20% of likely Democratic caucus goers say Sanders is their first choice. Three other presidential hopefuls not far behind. Senator Elizabeth Warren at 17%, Mayor Pete Buttigieg falling a bit to 16%, and former Vice President Joe Biden coming in at 15%. The four frontrunners will be joined Tuesday night by Senator Amy Klobuchar and billionaire Tom Steyer for the final debate before the February 3rd caucus. Steyer qualifying for the debate late Thursday after surprising poll results in two early states where the candidate had flooded the airwaves with ads. In Nevada, where I think I was at 12 percent and in third oh, place, and in South Carolina, where I was at 15 percent and in second place. Joe Biden may be in the fourth spot in the Iowa poll, but the latest Washington Post Ipsos poll shows that he has overwhelming support from at least one block of Democrats. Nearly half of black Democratic leaning voters support the former vice president, more than twice the number who support his closest competitor. My name is Joe Biden. I'm seeking the Democratic nomination for president of the United States. Look me over, OK? Mike Bloomberg will not be on the debate stage next week. The former New York City mayor has reportedly spent $200 million on campaign ads and is currently on a bus tour through Texas. We are going to finally turn Texas blue. Yeah. And we're not going to leave anyone behind. Bloomberg announcing he is opening campaign offices across the state. Rachel Scott, ABC News, Newton, Iowa. And the British royal family will meet tomorrow to discuss the future of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Buckingham Palace has been in crisis mode since the couple's stunning decision to step back from royal duties. Meanwhile, a new report says Meghan Markle, the wife of Britain's Prince Harry, has agreed to record a voiceover for Disney. That's in return for the company making a donation to a charity that works to protect elephants. Now, right now, there are no details about what Meghan's voiceover would involve. I think it's also important to mention that before she was the Duchess, she was an actress. Right. So this is kind of right. what she Return to the roots to. kind of mm -hmm. thing. I mean, obviously, all the royal drama is going on, but I love Meghan Markle in suits. <laughs> well, you, you might get a shot to see her again back in. There you go. All right, 639, 38 degrees out. And if your New Year's resolution is to stay organized, like me, <laughs> like me. <laughs> right up your oh alley. I'm so happy gonna, you got this read. We're going to be listening closely. We're going to have some easy and effective ways to help you do just that. So I actually worked on the package with you in mind. Because I remember we talked organized? about, yeah, we uh -huh. talked about New Year's resolution. Still haven't figured mine out. Really? Yeah, because I feel like it could be let. I have a whole theory on it. We can talk about it later in the show. All right, that's cool. Anyway, let's, <laughs> let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. Like you said, 38 degrees out there now. Hoping for another gorgeous day like we saw yesterday. Mike Ostrades joins us with your full forecast in just a few moments. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. 6.43 this Sunday morning. A chilly start to the day. It's cold. Normal low temperature, though, which is the 30-year average. I would mm -hmm. say, you know, what should be, but, yeah, it's usually never normal. Well, but, right um, now, but not the afternoon. But 30-year so average is, is 40 degrees, so we're ah. right about mm. at a normal. All What's right. going on here? What I want to know is, Aww. is there actually water in this sink? Because how did the cat stay in there long enough? That's a close to the picture. different kind of cat. Or a very good photographer. I don't <laughs> or know. All of the above. You know what? I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that would buy that photograph. Aw, taking yeah. a bath in the sink outside. On the we actually gave our cat Aww. a bath years ago. Hmm. It's impressive. In a, in a bucket outside. Did you ever hear the expression, it's like herding cats? <laughs> yeah, or, or bathing cats. <laughs> yeah, I've heard. <laughs> herding cats is like coaching a t-ball, so. <laughs> <laughs> or a little five-year-old. Yeah, so. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> it's fun, but it's, but doesn't look happy. Anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture, and good luck with that uh, cat bathing. There, we're starting to see the early signs of the sun. Wow, what a beautiful picture. A couple of high, wispy clouds out there. And uh, that's an indication that, yes, we will have a couple more clouds as compared to yesterday. But still, it's going to be just a wonderful day. Freezing, Ball Verde, and then going off to the uh, north and west. Bernie, Kerrville, Comfort, even Pleasanton is at freezing right now. Tarpley, 33 degrees. Bandera, 30, so for all intents and purposes, right around freezing. And there's um, 
very low humidity. Of course, the humidity though is going to start to work its way back in here later on today. It's not like we're going to be feeling it necessarily, but that's just uh, the precursor of what's to come tomorrow and those few high clouds. This is the air that we had yesterday. This darker shade of gray way off here to the east in this uh, kind of tannish color is bone dry air. Now we've got more moisture coming in upstairs in the atmosphere, and so that's why there's those few high clouds out there this morning, and we'll have some of them throughout the rest of today, which is what uh, this computer model indicates. Just a few of those clouds smattered around here. Overall, though, just a, a fantastic day. Nice, pleasant temperatures. Cool if you're in the shade. A light little jacket, but very nice if you're in the sunshine. It all changes overnight, though, with the humidity return. Lots of clouds tomorrow morning. Some uh, patchy fog, mist and drizzle is going to be possible. And even a couple of showers are possible throughout the day tomorrow and also on Tuesday morning. And really starting tomorrow, we're going to keep clouds around pretty much all week long. Limited sunshine, more in the way of clouds. And there's the humidity, which definitely starts to come back into the picture as we go into tomorrow. And the humidity is going to be staying very high all week long and there's those here's the uh, satellite picture right now and some of those clouds there's not any big storm systems moving on in here but we've just got all this moisture which starts to come in here from aloft from the uh, pacific ocean and then also the gulf of mexico and little disturbances little chances of rain 57 degrees today at noon mostly sunny skies and high temperature today up to 65 good looking day a few more high clouds but still pretty darn nice and then the humidity really comes back into the picture overnight and so tomorrow we will start off with some patchy fog mist and drizzle around here cool especially with the extra humidity it's going to be kind of that dampish chill up to 68 and then very mild we'll stay in the 60s for low temperatures high temperature is going to be in the mid to upper 70s down a bit Thursday now this is not going to be total cloud cover or showers all the time but just a lot of clouds a couple of showers here another front gets us back to normal by next weekend. But we need the rain though, right? This it's not going to be anything as it's right now any big like gotcha. rain. So it's just going to be a nuisance. <laughs> basically. Okay. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Maybe the good rain will come later. <laughs> yeah, hopefully so. She always has a silver lining. She does. Good. She's just so Aww. bright. You're the optimism we need in the mornings. <laughs> I'm just suggesting. <laughs> 647 38 degrees out. And still ahead, do not give up on those New there Year's resolutions. There it is, the optimism again. <laughs> Motivational <laughs> <To> stay <speech>. organized. <laughs> we have some ways to keep you on track when it comes to meeting your goals. Well, he is a puppy still, going to be a yes, big dog and lots of energy. And all he needs is plenty of love. And you're going to meet him coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. Well, if you need a big dose of just energy and excitement and just love and life, that's the guy. Wendy's here from the Animal Defense League, and who is he? This is Jaden, and he is a four-month-old pug terrier mix. He's already 16 pounds at four months old. Not quite sure if he's going to be around a 30-pound dog or maybe even a little bit more, but this guy just loves life, and he is so excited to be here anywhere as long as he's with you. And I'll tell you what, he uh, Officer Trujillo is walking behind the cameras right there. <laughs> he's just like, what's going on? What, what's going on over there? And what, do you, what do you see? Is that is that the officer back there? Yes. Yes. Can you speak? Or, he's or, actually not really. I have not heard a really? peep out of him. Well, that's always good. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if you want... <laughs> <laughs> and there goes Marcus <laughs> trying to get the dog going. <laughs> if you want a uh, walking buddy, a jogging buddy, this is going to be the guy for you. And a tennis ball in the backyard with kids and absolutely be sleeping. So. And this is the kind of dog that's going to get along with everybody. Right. Everybody, and he loves other dogs too. You wanted to talk about fostering. Yeah, we are, you know, San Antonio, we're warm all year round, and so we constantly have a supply of puppies and kittens, and we need fosters to help with that. So um, if you go to our website, we have a whole foster page, and uh, you can find out what we need uh, in terms of help. And also, our, our wish list is there, and we do always have a need for formula and toys and a variety of things. So check out the ADL website. ADLTexas.org. Uh, you can see all our, volu our volunteer, foster, and 
Wish it, list. You know, and it seems like for all the shelters, this has been a tough year because there wasn't really the lull after the big spring and summer influx of all the Absolutely. puppies and kittens, and it's been going strong. And now we got spring yep. coming up in you know right around the corner. Basically. And we'll have so. lots of puppies and okay. kittens. So, so if you would like to uh, foster, great learning opportunity for the kids as well as uh, some volunteer hours for them. Eleven three hundred Nacogdoches is the main campus of the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. Six five five fourteen eighty one is the number to call. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Yeah, you had said he looked like an older dog. Mm -hmm. No, he wasn't wasn't that old. I think it was just that muzzle. He's just got that look about him. So <laughs> he's, I do have a he's question, not though. using moisturizer. <laughs> <laughs> and look what happens. I do have a question though, Mike. We see these dogs every weekend. Yes. You see them every day. How not, do you not just not every just on Tuesdays right. we record well, them? But yes. more How often do you than not do. take them home? Because I have a dog and a cat at home. <laughs> I don't <laughs> go through body training with but there are every once in a while. There's one of them that's just like, oh, it, it's, it's really tough not to. So like It's that. tough not to watching it. Right. But if you want to take a moment, remember, it is a lifelong commitment. Mm -hmm. um, so even though, you know, puppies are cute right now, you're with them for a good 8, 10, 15 years yeah. in some cases. So fostering is something you can do, too, because, um, you know, maybe get the kids a chance to see if they can take care of it. And for teenagers, you can get volunteer hours with that. And they've been needing fosters for about the past year. It's been a, a, an unusual year last year. We were talking about that because usually it's just in the spring with kitten season and puppy season. Right. It was all year long. They Aww. never really ran out. So if you like these cute faces, go out and adopt. Most definitely. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. It, it might be a New Year's resolution, but we talk about another one. So it's a chance to keep that resolution to be more organized. That's true. It's on your list, right? Yeah, it's on my list. So in this morning's Angie List report, we have some advice from the pros how to get that ball rolling. From the garage to the pantry to the closet in the bathroom, many of us could use a hand getting the clutter under control. Now is a great time to get a fresh start on your home organization. The new year is a great time to consider decluttering your home. The best way to be successful is to start with one small area of your home, get that in tip top shape, and that'll give you the motivation to tackle other areas. So I always say if it's overwhelming, start small. So start with a drawer or a cupboard. Um, don't tackle those boxes of memories that you've been collecting of your kids for the last 18 years. That is generally the very last project that I would do because it's everything has an emotional tie. To set yourself up for success, start with the spot where the items themselves will indicate whether they should be kept or tossed away. Pantries are a great spot to start because things expire. So check those expiration dates, uh, pitch anything that, you know, is past its prime and when you're wanting to get started uh, with an organizing project, take everything out of the space. Um, literally everything. Wipe it all clean. Start with that clean slate and determine what really deserves to be back in that space. And like I said, donate things, pitch things that no longer make sense for your lifestyle or where you're at. Then you're ready to start filling the space back up. And once you see the organized, finished product, you'll get the confidence you need to keep on going. When considering what to keep and what to throw away when clearing out your house, make sure you stay logical and less emotional. For example, we were cleaning out our basement recently and I decided to part ways with a dollhouse that I'd put together when I was in my teens. Again, hard decision to make, but the right move for the house. Grab your coat or just throw the blankets back over your head right now and stay in bed because it's <laughs> cold out there. We do have some freezing temperatures and a beautiful start this morning. Some high clouds, 65 for a high temperature later on today. Not quite as perfect as yesterday, but still a darn nice looking day today. No complaints for me. 30 in comfort. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah, it's cold right Not now. Not very comfortable. Not very comfortable. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, yeah good point. Mike. All right, we're about to take an hour-long break from Good Morning America. But when we come back, we have so much to talk about. We kick off our series called Leading SA. I sit down with some of the leaders here in San Antonio. We are kicking off the series with Mayor Ron Nuremberg, and we talk about a lot. We did our research. We picked out some of the issues that people in and around San Antonio see every day. We had a platform for what he thinks the vision of San Antonio looks for and we answer viewer submitted questions, so you're not gonna miss that. That's right, very interesting. You're gonna wanna see the mayor's vision for 2020. And also in our area, there's a huge need for blood right now, so we're gonna go live with our Sarah Costa to tell you how you can help. And what's in store for the work week and the school week? We'll let you know. All right, see you guys in an hour. You.
Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA, a man in critical condition after he was shot five times over his bike. Well, you know about the events leading up to that shooting. You know, San Antonio is becoming, uh, is no longer a best kept secret and people are investing their time, their talent, their energy and their money and, and resources into San Antonio to create a better situation for all of us. Mayor Ron Nuremberg talks about the city of San Antonio, where we are right now and where are we going. It is the first installment of our new series, Leading Essay. And taking a look wow. outside with live cam, beautiful shot there. The sun is out, but it's cold. 37 degrees. If you have to be outside, of course, bundle up. Good morning. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us. It is Sunday, January 12th and very cold outside. Yes. Very cold outside, but the sun is shining. Yes. And if it's anything like yesterday, it is going to be another beauty out there. Did you make it outside yesterday? Yes, it was awesome. What'd you do? Beautiful day. Family fun? Well, in and out of the house, but yes. Yeah, yeah. running errands. <laughs> so, Mike, do people have to run errands today? It's a good day? Perfect. Yeah. It's cold this morning, uh, but we've got a great sunrise on tap right now. Temperature is now up to, well, it was still at 37 degrees as of right now. We've stayed steady for about the past um, couple of hours and starting to warm up in portions of the hill country. Wind is very light out of the uh, west and northwest at about three miles per hour, so not much of a wind chill to deal with this morning. And there are a couple of clouds out there. Temperatures around the area right now. As you can see, we do have some freezing readings still in parts of the hill country, but it won't be long before uh, once that sun gets up a little bit higher before things really start to warm up. It's still freezing Balverde comfort and then throughout the rest of today we are going to make it up to the mid 60s. Couple of extra clouds kind of hanging around here. Things are definitely going to be changing overnight. The humidity is going to come back into the picture and we'll have some morning fog, maybe a little bit of drizzle around here and then there's a small chance for a shower tomorrow really wouldn't worry about it that much, but just a mention of it and 68 degrees in the rest of the week. It's going to be even milder. A couple of showers here and there. Not any big deal, unfortunately, as far as rain is concerned. Another front's going to be moving through late in the week. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Max. Thanks, Mike. Top stories we're following this morning. A man shot five times after another man tried stealing his bike. The shooting happened just before 11 last night on North Brazos Street and Kaufman Court on the city's west side. Now, according to police, the victim was riding his bike when he was stopped by the suspect who was demanding that bike. The victim refused, and that's when the man shot him five times. The man was taken into custody and is facing at least a charge of aggravated assault. The victim was taken to the hospital and right now is in critical condition. And the critically low blood shortage in South Texas continues. South Texans, though, they have made 2,062 donations since an appeal began Tuesday for more donations. And representatives with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center say they are still only one major traffic accident away from depleting their blood supply. Sarah Costa live at the Donor Pavilion with how the community can help out today. Good morning, and like you said earlier, Max, they, they have had 2,062 donations since that appeal was made on Tuesday. As of yesterday, they are still 100 donations short um, as for their goal. Their goal is 2,162 to make sure that no major surgeries are having to be canceled if there was an accident, God forbid, and South Texas not having enough blood, and that is why their centers are open today more of their centers or all of their centers. I'm here with Mary Ulick with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. And, you know, why did it come to this critical low level? How did we get here? Well, two things really. Coming off the holidays when there are fewer blood drives scheduled and more people are busy and can't come in to donate, our supplies were low. We've also had a series of trauma accidents in San Antonio, trauma cases that our hospitals have had to respond to. One case, a single patient used more than 200 units of blood. It's close to half of our collections on a daily basis. So low supply coming off the holidays combined with fewer blood drives and fewer donors is a recipe for disaster for our blood supply. So you guys really just need as many donations and many donors to come out today. I know usually only three donation centers are open, but all of them are open today and they opened as early as 730 this morning. That's right. We have seven donor rooms, five in San Antonio, one in New Braunfels, one in Victoria. They are all open today. We're hoping that donors come out. 
uh, they can see the schedules and if they want schedule an appointment at southtexasblood.org and they can also find out about mobile drives uh, we really need support for our mobile drives in January too, hosted by local corporations and organizations. We hope people sign up and come out and, and support their community and patients in our hospitals. Well, thank you so much, Mary. We already see two people, maybe three people are already out here donating early this morning. So if you're going to be out and about, especially the Donor Pavilion, it's right off Highway 10 or I-10. Just come on by, even if you can't schedule an appointment, if you're, they also take walk-ins as well. Live from the Donor Pavilion for South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Max and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. And we have a new series here at KSET called Leading SA, where we sit down with some of our elected officials and the leaders of the Alamo City. And so to kick off the series, I sat down with Mayor Ron Nuremberg. We talked about a lot. Our conversation ranging from the possibility of some high-tech public transit to crime rates and the vision of the future of the Alamo City. Well, first of all, San Antonio is not the next Austin. San Antonio is the next San Antonio. We are growing in a unique way, and we're protecting our culture and our heritage, and we are a unique city into the world, and we will maintain that. That's a focus of ours. San Antonio is growing at a rapid pace. The estimates show we could add another 1 million people by the year 2040. So one of the mayor's top priorities, make sure that our public transportation system is prepared. And so the work that we're doing right now is to uh, basically bring that uh, connection SA plan to the public and to the council and to the commissioner's court to get approval and ultimately uh, put the funding for that system on the ballot in November. The 2020 ballot will be a big decision for the people of San Antonio. The vote could decide whether the city's one eighth cent sales tax could go help fund the future of public transit. There's a lot of activity and a lot of transportation happening and a lot of congestion. We're trying to link up with a mass transit system in the city of San Antonio. So the ART, Advanced Rapid Transit, is a a uh, system of trans transportation that would allow us to bring high density mass transit to San Antonio in a cost effective, fundable manner. Another one of the mayor's top priorities for 2020 is the census and making sure we are all counted and our voices are heard because it has huge implications. So everything that we do from a public standpoint, you and me riding on our streets or going to our schools depends on making sure that, that relative to the other cities around the country, we know how many people are in San Antonio. We had a lot of viewer questions submitted as well. A popular topic revolved around homelessness, how to address the problem going forward and avoid issues that we see in Austin. Austin has dealt with its homelessness issues in much different ways and we have the benefit of having an extraordinary um, community of services and organizations that are contributing to that effort. Another topic viewers wanted to ask about was crime rates and gang violence. We've been working in partnership with the Bear County Sheriff's Office, with the state of Texas DPS and other entities including uh, in intelligence agencies to share information and to ensure that we're getting a grip on gang activity. It's called the Tan Texas Anti-Gangs Initiative. We are on pace for rapid growth. There are big plans for education and for more businesses here in the Alamo City. Can we compete with Austin in the future with tech giants? Uh, we're getting there. Austin, believe it or not, we have more college students than Austin does here in San Antonio. The question is, where will they be after they graduate? And so we're starting to see a lot, a lot of growth within our young tech community and the tech jobs that are available. All in all, whether it's schools, jobs, crime rates, or the local economy, there's a sense of optimism in San Antonio, now and going forward. Ultimately, that's what the test will be, is to ensure that our city continues to move on the right track, that we're continuing to be a place where people can find their career, that they can feel safe, that they have an enjoyable experience, and they're able to raise a family. Now, this is just a fraction of the large range of topics the mayor and I discussed. We dove into growing our city, keeping the culture alive, expansion of UTSA, education, local businesses, protecting green spaces, so much more. And you can watch it on our KSAT streaming app and KSAT.com right now. You're going to be able to watch the entire interview, including links to topics that many that the mayor touched on. I like that. One of the focus, of course, transportation. You know, mm -hmm. the mayor had talked about people sitting in gridlock. Now... He says, if, you, if you're feeling it now, can you imagine? With another million people right, or so. Right, if, if something's not done. We had VIA on SA Live the other day because they were talking about their plan for the future. And they it's a 10-year plan. And they've got some different things like dedicated 
uh, lanes for not necessarily buses, maybe a mm -hmm. different type of vehicle. Uh, it's They call it the smart man's light rail, which would, would help out with that. And so they're already trying to do different things. But, you know, the, the million more people in 20 years, and during that, they had uh, brought up the fact that next year, we may jump into number six place in the country as far as the largest cities. Wow. We're at seven right now and may continue to move up from there. So I yeah. don't feel like... We're, well, no, you know. we're very <laughs> you know, spread out. Yeah, it's, well, it's, we are. It's very it? spread out, and what's unusual, then, outside the metropolitan area, there's nothing out there, you know, unlike, so right. once you get past the surrounding counties, gotcha. there's nothing out there. But. It is important to mention, though, that this is only the first segment in the series, Leading SA. We talked to Manny Pelias last week, and then this Tuesday, we're sitting down with Anna Sandoval, District 7. So if you guys have any questions, viewers, oh, yeah. send them in. Send them in, ksat.com. We have a, uh, a section where you can submit your questions. When I sit down with her Tuesday morning, we will ask them. Neat series. Yeah, very cool. You can check it out on OTT as well. Absolutely. 810, 37 degrees out. And a huge upset that Max liked. <laughs> yeah, in the NFL playoff picture, the number one team going down. So could the Texans and Titans see each other for a third time this season? in the AFC Championship. Full preview with Max, just ahead. That was Derrick Henry, <laughs> barreling his way to 195 <laughs> rushing yards. Also threw a touchdown, we have highlights. And if you're gonna be on the roads today, you might wanna check your GPS before you leave. Lots of road closures happening in and around the city. We'll tell you all about them next. And taking a look outside with live cam, looks pretty to me, but looks chilly, right? 37 degrees, Mike, yep, that's correct. Cold. Yeah, yep. it's cold get a jacket definitely for right now we're going to check in with mike after the break to see what we can expect for the rest of the week good morning and welcome back 8 15 this sunday morning and if you're going to be out and about today listen up cps energy crews are out there working in three different locations today so expect major road closures that's right warsbach parkway lock hill selma has been closed since 7 this morning and will remain closed until about 3 in the afternoon so cps energy reminding drivers of the move over slow down law it requires drivers to move over or slow down for first responders tech stop vehicles tow trucks utility workers and trash collectors stopped on the side of the road with emergency lights activated so for a full list of all those road closures happening today and when they're expected to reopen, you can go to our website at kset.com. And so far today, 37 degrees, yes, but it looks like a great day to be out and about, getting those errands done. Yep. Get everything finished. Yep. Yeah, enjoy uh, we've your got, um, uh, what I was going to say, more clouds today than what we've had the past uh, couple of days. And we're still going to gain about 30 degrees. It's still going to be a fantastic day. I mean, just awesome. comparing it to yesterday, it won't be as perfect looking, but it's still going to be really nice. Well, yesterday really, really was nice. cream of the crop. Yeah, yeah. We had those <laughs> very, I mean, just set the bar intensely high. blue skies. We've got a couple of clouds out there. I love this picture. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. With regular deer season coming to an end, nice. activity is still high. The buck still had the does covered. That's so cool. That's Laredo. That's a great. Yeah, that's a great. That's that's beautiful thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. Speaking of beautiful day, wow. Now there's those high clouds that are hanging around here. Obviously, it's not blocking out the sunshine. We've got plenty of it out there right now, and we haven't started to warm yet. Temperatures are still. That was our low this morning, officially 37 degrees. Freezing Balverde, uh, Bernie up toward the hill country, Rio Medina, Tarpley, and still freezing in Pleasanton. And got some very dry air out there, of course. And it was the dry air, the clear skies, and the light wind that allowed temperatures to really drop down. Then we had the moisture come on in here. This was the air that we had yesterday, this dark shade right here, and that's the bone dry air upstairs. So now we've got that milky shade, those high wispy clouds out there. It's still a fantastic looking day. And this computer model has some of these clouds hanging around here throughout the day and then really starting to cloud up overnight. We're going to have the humidity come back on in here. That's going to give us some fog, maybe some mist and drizzle in the morning. And a couple of showers are possible throughout the day. Computer models have one or two of them sort of scattered about, even going into tomorrow night night and then Tuesday pretty much the same thing except it will get progressively warmer as we go on in through the rest of the week. Here's what it looks like as far as the wind flow. It really starts to pick up out of the southeast. Now the humidity will begin to increase later on today. It's not like it's going to wreck the day at all. So it's going to be great to be outside but then that humidity really pumps on in here overnight and so that's why we do see the mist and fog and drizzle and whatever and very, very mild low temperatures because you can't drop down below what the uh, dew point temperatures are. So therefore, we are going to be staying 
for low temperatures basically in the uh, low to mid 60s throughout most of the rest of the week. So there's those few clouds that are showing up on the uh, satellite picture as of right now. We still don't have any big storm systems moving on in here. Most everything is staying well up there to the north of us. There may be another front trying to move through by hmm, Friday into Saturday. It's not going to be one of those that really clears us all out, but it will get temperatures back down to normal readings after we have a very, very mild week. 57 degrees today at noon. Mostly sunny skies. A lot of those high clouds out there today. And then a high temperature, we make it up to 65, so a little bit above normal. Good looking day, a lot of high clouds, still fantastic, partly cloudy skies. And then tomorrow we start off with some fog in the morning, 48 degrees, cool. It's going to be that sort of damp chill tomorrow morning. So that'll kind of sneak down the back of your neck a little bit. And temperatures continue to get milder, mid and upper 70s, middle of the week. A couple of showers are possible. This is not going to be a big rain event. Uh, you summed it up quite well. Kind of nuisance little showers here and there. Gotcha. Mist and fog tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning, and then another uh, decent front moves through here by Saturday. Hmm. But as far as the middle of the week, our utility bills, not too bad. Kind of mild. <laughs> Yeah, that's I'm a looking nice. At. <laughs> exactly. Not going to be running a heater. Maybe we talk about this all the time. Steph, just the sense of optimism on GMSA mm -hmm. on the weekends. I continue with that. She's always. Well, it's true. Oh, yeah. We'll save money Smile for a few years. days. The glass Love is not it. half full. The glass is just overflowing. Right. It's definitely so. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Thanks. Time now, 819, 37 degrees out. All right, still ahead on GMSA, it's award season, and the Academy Awards are revealing nominations this week, how you can stream the nominations. And the presumptive MVP and the number one team in the NFL, out of the playoffs. The Ravens dethroned by an unlikely foe. The recap coming up right after the break. There's King Henry right there. Wow. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good morning and welcome back. It is a good day for playoff football, so let's get started. The Houston Texans meeting the Chiefs in Kansas City today, and it will feature two of the league's best young quarterbacks, Deshaun Watson and, of course, Patrick Mahomes. Shout out Texas Tech. Both of them coming out of the 2017 NFL Draft. Both have had some miraculous moments this season. The game is set for this afternoon. Very exciting and also fun fact snowed yesterday in Kansas City, but today it should be clear skies. Great game for some good quarterbacking. All right, next up, also talking about divisional round today, Seattle Seahawks and Green Bay Packers. A game is set to start at about 540 this evening. The king of the AFC is down and out. Lamar Jackson, the presumptive MVP, and the number one ranked Ravens losing last night at the hands of Derrick Henry, King Henry, Ryan Tannehill, and the Titans defense. On paper, Lamar Jackson played a top-tier game Kept his MVP numbers alive. He finished the game with 365 yards passing and 143 yards running. What you're looking at right now is King Henry running down the field. So if you watched last night, it was all Derrick Henry. A few great tosses from Texas A&M alum Ryan Tannehill and the phenomenal Titans defense. Whew. Derrick Henry barreling his way to 195 yards on the ground. He even threw a touchdown pass. So the Titans, the Tennessee Titans, 9-7 and seven regular season record. They are going to the AFC Championship for the first time since 2002. The question that should be answered by the end of the day, who will they play in that AFC Championship game, the Texans or the Chiefs? All right, and it is a culmination of blood, sweat, and in so many teams' cases, tears. The College Football Championship set for tomorrow evening, and it is all Tigers, the Clemson Tigers and the LSU Tigers. The game set for Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans kickoff, 7 o'clock. And time to talk Spurs. Next game is tonight, taking on the Toronto Raptors. And it is in Toronto. Tip-off set for 5 o'clock. Also important to mention, the Raptors no longer have... <laughs> Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. He is a member of the Clippers. Yeah. But if we do remember back to that Kawhi trade, mm -hmm. DeMar DeRozan, a big part of that Toronto Raptors team... Right. He has been playing out of his mind the last 10 games. Hopefully that translates to a win tonight. That's right. Coming off that bad loss to the Grizzlies. So if the playoffs start today, the Spurs would be on the outside looking in to the Grizzlies in the 8th seed. Yes, so DeRosa needs to bring it again tonight. Mm -hmm. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. 825, 37 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, calling all rock and roll fans. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame will be announcing its 2020 inductees. Find out a few that made the list. And a whirlwind in the week of politics. Now, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi promising to send those articles of impeachment to the Senate. The latest on the impeachment showdown, that's next.
And let's take a look at birthdays today. First up, we have Ezra, two years old. Aww. Happy birthday, Ezra. Happy birthday. And a happy birthday to Mikaelin. Beautiful pick, 10 years old. Enjoy your day. Kaylin turning 10 today. Now keep posting your birthday pictures to kset.com slash birthdays. And remember to include a name and an age. And Aww. not a birthday, but a very <laughs> special shout out to our own Sarah Spivey. Sarah, today is her wedding day and we want to wish her the best. Congratulations, Sarah. Good morning and welcome back. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us. It is Sunday. Happy Sunday. And thank you for being here on this very cold morning, 37 degrees. Hopefully a lot of you are still covered up. Covered up. A nice warm blanket. Bundled up. 37 yes. now, but it looks like it could be a perfect day for a Sunday fun day, right, Mike? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be just fantastic. By the way, the uh, latest uh, mold count or pollen count just came out. I didn't have time to update the graphic, but mold is on the light side and mountain cedar is on the heavy side, but it came down at uh, 2,460. I'm going to get that graphic made up. I want to jump ahead to tomorrow very quickly because things are definitely going to be changing. As you get to think about tomorrow morning, we are going to have clouds with some fall. A little bit of mist and drizzle around the area as the humidity comes back in here and then throughout the day 68 degrees and maybe a couple of showers. This is going to be for tomorrow just so you can kind of get prepared and maybe plan to leave a little bit extra early tomorrow morning. Now back to today. It is absolutely gorgeous out there. We've got plenty of sunshine. Notice how we do have those high wispy clouds. Yeah, we'll keep a lot of those around throughout the day. It started to warm up a little bit in uh, Balverde, Bernie, Comfort, now just above freezing, uh, still freezing at Tarpley and Kerrville. We're still at 37 degrees here in town. And throughout the rest of today, we're going to make it up to 57 at noon and probably cloudy skies, 65 for a high temperature. So beautiful day. Maybe not quite as perfect as yesterday with some of those high clouds, but still absolutely fantastic out there. But as I just alluded to, it's all going to be changing tomorrow, and that's pretty much the way it's going to be sticking around most of next week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Max. Thanks, Mike. In your morning headlines, the impeachment showdown and a pivotal week in Washington. Speaker Nancy Pelosi is promising to send articles of impeachment to the Senate, setting the stage for a historic trial. ABC's David Wright is at the White House with more on what to expect. This is set to be a momentous week here in Washington as the impeachment process resumes after a brief break over the holidays. House Democrats are expected to discuss impeachment at their caucus on Tuesday. And after that, the full House will vote to appoint managers for the case, and they will then vote to transmit the articles of impeachment over to the Senate. That means that the soonest an impeachment trial could begin in the Senate would be Wednesday. For now, Speaker Pelosi appears to have lost her efforts effort to convince Senate Republicans to allow witnesses in the trial, but there is still some room for that to change if they can convince four Senate Republicans to break ranks. And David, Senator McConnell has said that he wants to use the Clinton impeachment trial as a precedent here. Does that give us a sense of how long President Trump's trial could take? It gives us a possibility. Uh, that trial began almost exactly at this time of year, January 7th, and it was over in just over a month. Uh, there were a couple of days for the managers to present their case, among them a young congressman, Lindsey Graham, a few days for the president to mount a defense, and all of this presided over by the chief justice. You see him there, William Rehnquist at the time. No witnesses at that trial, but we did hear some video testimony. So this time it takes place against the backdrop of the beginning of primary season. That could cause a problem for the five Senate Democrats who are normally out on the campaign trail. And again, that was David Wright reporting at the White House. In the Philippines today, a volcano south of the capital causing tremors and spewing ash into the air. Authorities ordering the evacuation of about 8,000 people, even canceling flights to and from the region. The volcano spewed ash that generated nearly a mile high plume, triggering ashfall in nearby communities. And severe storms that swept across portions of the U.S. are being blamed for the deaths of at least 11 people. And it was a close call for a family in spring near Houston. High winds from storms yesterday toppled a neighbor's tree onto their home. A couple and their 10-month-old baby were inside. The roof was crushed, kitchen damaged, but they all got out of that house and they're safe. 
and taking a look ahead to next week. Six Democratic presidential candidates are set to take the stage Tuesday night in Des Moines, Iowa. This marks the seventh debate of the primary season and will be the last be debate before the Iowa caucuses on February 3rd. And China's vice premier set to travel to the United States this week after the two sides reached a first stage deal on trade. President Donald Trump has said Phase one will be signed on Wednesday and work on the second phase of the deal will begin soon, but he doesn't expect a resolution before the November presidential election. The nominations for the 92nd Academy Awards will be announced on Monday morning. Movie fans can stream those nominations on various social media platforms, including Facebook and Twitter. The announcement will also be live streamed on the official Oscars YouTube page. So the Academy announcing last week that for the second year in a row, there will be no host for the February 9th ceremony. And this next story goes out to Steph and all the big music lovers out there. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame unveiling its 2020 class of inductees on Wednesday. And there are 16 contenders this year. Wow. Yeah. Nine first year nominees vying for their spot in the Hall of Fame. Among some of the favorites this year, late singer Whitney Houston, late rapper Notorious B.I.G. And the induction ceremony will be held May 2nd in Cleveland. Interesting. I already thought Whitney Houston was there. But not yet. We'll see. We'll see. So South Texas has reached a critically low shortage of blood this week. Just one major accident in a way of it depleting its blood supply. So earlier this week, there was a call out to the public for donations. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center saying donations were made, but still falling short of the necessary goal. Our Sarah Costa is live at the donor pavilion that opened their doors early today to reach that goal. Good morning, and it's not just the donor pavilion that is open. They have opened the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center has opened all of their donations centers so you can come and donate because that level is so critically low. There was a plea put out on Tuesday that they needed 2,162 donations so they wouldn't deplete all of their supply. Yesterday, there's still 100 donations short. And it makes me happy to say that there are quite a few people donating on this early Sunday morning. So the part of the community is doing your part, but there are still empty beds. And I'm here with Miss Mary with the blood and South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. And I mean, does it make you feel good that, you know, you are seeing a, a good amount of people here for this early morning? It is heartwarming to see donors turn out on a Sunday morning to come support patients in our community. And, and that's what we need every day is an ongoing supply of blood donations to support hospitals across South Texas. Uh, earlier this week, there was a statement put out, you know, the, you guys are, South Texas is just, you know, one traumatic accident away from depleting its donation supply. And, you know, how did we get to this level? You said there were some cr uh, major accidents in December that kind of lowered that, the That's supply. Right. December and, and as recently as last week, there were several trauma cases that used un, un, unusually large volumes of blood. So that depletes the supply and it, it is hard as we come into the new year to rebuild that inventory. But that's what we're working to do now and why we appreciate donors coming out this morning, tomorrow and going forward. Come out and do your part. Just go to SouthTexasBlood.org. That's right. SouthTexasBlood.org. You can either make an appointment or, of course, if you're just out and about and you're driving I-10 or near any of those other donation areas, just stop in. It takes about an hour to donate, and they'll go through the process with you What, if you are able to donate or not. Live from the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, donation pavilion, Donors Pavilion, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Max and Stephanie. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 838, 37 degrees out. I feel like it's just getting colder. For now. For now. So take a look at these sunglasses, or actually glasses. One Ukrainian company thinking outside the box and making eyeglasses that are environmentally friendly. You would not believe what they're made of. Still Do you ahead. wear glasses? No, I wear contacts. Mm, I have both. I just don't look good in the glasses. Oh, you should try it out. We'll, we'll be the judge. Not right? on air. <laughs> Let's see the pets, please. Well, he is a puppy still, going to be a big dog and lots of energy, and all he needs is plenty of love, and you're going to meet him coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. Uh, and taking a live look at the Alamo City, Mike, let's talk about some of those uh, nominations. No, so, uh, Pat Benatar's on the yes. list. Uh, Talk the about Lizzie, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year. Todd Rundgren, MC5. Nobody know them back from uh And from my band, Depeche Mode. Doobie oh. Brothers. <laughs> Dave Matthews Band. Yep. A lot to look for. We'll be right back. 
Well, if you need a big dose of just energy and excitement and just love and life, that's the guy. Wendy's here from the Animal Defense League, and who is he? This is Jaden, and he is a four-month-old pug terrier mix. He's already 16 pounds at four months old. Not quite sure if he's going to be around a 30-pound dog or maybe even a little bit more, but this guy just loves life, and he is so excited to be here anywhere as long as he's with you. And I'll tell you what, he, uh, Officer Trujillo is walking behind the cameras <laughs> right there, and he's just like, what's going on? What, what's going on over there? And what, do you, what do you see? Is that, is that the officer back there? Yes. Yes. Can you speak? Or, He's or, actually not really. I have not heard a really? peep out of him. Well, that's always good. Yeah. Tell you what, if you want... <laughs> <laughs> and there goes Marcus, <laughs> trying to get the dog going. <laughs> if you want a uh, walking buddy, a jogging buddy, this is going to be the guy for you and a tennis ball in the backyard with kids and Absolutely. everybody's going to be sleeping. So. And this is the kind of dog that's going to get along with everybody. Right. Everybody, and he loves other dogs too. You wanted to talk about fostering. Yeah, we are, you know, San Antonio, we're warm all year round, and so we constantly have a supply of puppies and kittens, and we need fosters to help with that. So um, if you go to our website, we have a whole foster page, and uh, you can find out what we need uh, in terms of help. And also, our, our wish list is there, and we do always have a need for formula and toys and a variety of things. So check out the ADL website. ADLTexas.org. Uh, you can see all our, volu our volunteer, foster, and wish list. And, you know, and it seems like for all the shelters, this has been a tough year because there wasn't really the lull after the big spring and summer influx of all the Absolutely. puppies and kittens, and it's been going strong. And now we got spring yep. coming up in you know right around the corner. Basically. And we'll have so. lots of puppies and okay. kittens. So, so if you would like to uh, foster, great learning opportunity for the kids as well as uh, some volunteer hours for them. Eleven three hundred Nacogdoches is the main campus of the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. Six five five fourteen eighty one is the number to call. Thank you, dear. Thank you. I don't know how you don't go home with three yeah. new puppies every week. It's always so funny, and I mentioned in this one, Marcus, Officer Trujillo, is usually there when we shoot on Tuesdays, and he's behind the camera. <laughs> What's going on? What's he's, going on? He's so, also loving on the pets. Aww. Yes, he is, but he's also trying to get them riled up, I'll say. So. Oh, yeah. how Cute funny. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, 37 degrees now, but later, a perfect day to yeah, walk your dogs. Uh, yep, yeah, fantastic day to walk your dog. Um, we're going to have a few high clouds out there. And wow. by the way, tonight, if the clouds don't really thicken up too awfully much, you might be able to see the moon. Now, it is a couple of days past full. It was full on Friday, but wow, somebody got a new Celestron telescope. Don't know what that means, but watching <laughs> the full moon on a cold night downtown. How cool is that? Great picture. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Uh, once again, we came out with this mountain cedar today. Did drop down significantly from yesterday, down to 2,400 plus. Still on the high side, obviously. Mold is low, and hopefully. Mountain Cedar stays on the lower side throughout the next few days because we don't have any strong northwesterly winds in the forecast until probably late next week. Now, there's those high clouds that we are talking about. It's still 37 degrees. Everybody is now, at least the reporting stations, now above freezing. Close to it, obviously, though. Hondo and uh, Tarpley. And the humidity is, is not bad. Now, humidity is really going to come back into the picture overnight. And so that's going to lead to some mist, drizzle, some fog in the morning. And there's some of those high clouds that are moving on in here and they'll be sticking around throughout the day and here's the computer model which shows yeah, some of those higher clouds and then clouds thicken up overnight with that extra humidity probably mist and drizzle fog in the morning tomorrow and perhaps a couple of showers throughout the afternoon one or two of them here and there it's not going to be a big deal same thing going into tomorrow night and then also Tuesday morning we'll have mist drizzle maybe a sprinkly shower some fog around the area not widespread just that nuisance kind of stuff the reason being the wind is really going to start to uh, pump in all that moisture from the uh, Gulf of Mexico and so that's why the humidity levels dew points definitely go up we're going to be staying in the about to low to mid 60s throughout most of the week, and that is going to hold temperatures, especially low temperatures, definitely up. So no fronts, at least here, but by Saturday, if this went one day further, this would drop back down again because we do have that front coming through on Saturday. So here's what the upper level winds look like. We got a little bit of a wave coming through tomorrow. That's going to maybe 
get us a couple of little sprinkles here and there. But for the most part, we've got a very sort of tranquil flow. There's going to be a lot of moisture around here, a lot of clouds, a couple little sprinkly showers here and there going through the rest of the week. And that'll be about it. Not much really to write home about this week, but then there's that front that comes through on Saturday. So that's going to cool us back down and uh, have a little bit more in the way of some sunshine by Saturday. But until then, well, today's great. Next Saturday, pretty good. The week is going to be, like I said, kind of so-so. 57 degrees today, mostly sunny skies, a lot of high clouds today, and a te high temperature up to 65, a little bit above normal. Good looking day. Humidity is still going to be very pleasant, but it comes up overnight, and so that's going to hold temperatures in the upper 40s tomorrow. It won't be as cold, but it's going to be that sort of damp chill. When you have all that humidity, it kind of kind of sneaks down the back of your neck a little bit, those colder temperatures. And then 75 on Tuesday. So morning fog tomorrow and Tuesday mornings. You know, one or two showers here and there, not really a big deal. And then we'll be back down to the low 60s for high temperature next Saturday. Oh, but today beautiful for Sarah's yeah. wedding. It's going to be, well, yeah. any day's beautiful and Sarah's going to be. She's just, going to be she's beautiful. Going to be such a beautiful bride too. So can't wait. Congrats again if, if you're awake. Mm. <laughs> and if you don't know what's going on, Sarah Spivey's getting married. Yes, yes. That's why we get to hang yes. out with Mike this morning. <laughs> There's always a downside. To it. <laughs> the way you said it, that's why we're getting to hang out with. I didn't say it was a consequence. Wow. <laughs> Whatever. Welcome, Mike. Always we're great to have, to have you. 849, 37 degrees out. All right, coming up next, uh, how one company in Ukraine making some eyeglasses out of coffee beans. What? <laughs> I will eat those glasses. Good morning. Coming up on this week, my exclusive interview with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She's going to join us live this morning after a momentous week. Of course, she did appear to decide at the end of the week that the House would send over those articles of impeachment, even though she got no upfront guarantees that there would be witnesses and new documents in the Senate trial. We're going to talk to her about that this morning. Also, latest on the crisis in Iran with those demonstrators in the streets. We'll speak with the president's national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, and of course, our powerhouse roundtable. It's all coming up on this week. And tomorrow on GMSA, when it comes to home improvements, hiring the right contractor can be difficult. Yes, it can. All you need to do is know somebody. <laughs> yeah, so, so you hire no, what you need to know so you can hire the right person, the correct person. That's right. Recommendations from mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. That always helps too. out. That's true. That helps out yeah. as well. Um, we've got some high clouds out there, as you can see. Still a great looking day. We're at 37, excuse me, up to 43 degrees right now. So we have started the, obviously, the warming process. And everybody's now above freezing. 57 degrees at noon and 65 degrees for a uh, high temperature with a lot of uh, those high clouds hanging around here. And we're going to start off with some uh, mist and drizzle tomorrow morning, some mm -hmm. patchy fog, same thing Tuesday. Very mild the rest of the week. I gotta be Not honest, bad. I'm really jealous of the, the mug. Does it say GMSA on it? Yes, of course it does. <laughs> All right. We'll get to that. <laughs> oh, they did it. Ooh, and it holds a big <laughs> cup of coffee, Max. Ugh. Coffee. All right, anyway, mm. producers yelling at us, we gotta go to the kicker. Check out this environmentally friendly way to make eyeglasses for all you coffee drinkers. Mm -hmm. Boom. Look at that transition. Mm -hmm. You can do more than just drink your favorite cup of Joe. Mike, you can wear it. Wow. I'll this, be darned. This Ukrainian <laughs> business is using coffee grounds to make eco-friendly glasses. They say it can take up to seven days to prepare the material for the coffee sunglasses. Two more hours of manual work to put to the frames ready for sale. On average, they use enough coffee grounds from one cup of espresso mm. to make one pair of glasses. The lenses are made from recycled cotton. Most of their customers are from other countries like Japan, Australia, and the United States. Wait, All right. Lenses are made from recycled cotton? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it's, that's, yeah, that's odd. So the, the actual frames are your coffee, your coffee. coffee grounds. And then the lenses, a recycled cotton. Interesting. What if, what I don't still know. If it's obviously it's mixed with some sort of resin, I wonder right. if it still smells like coffee. I wear That's, That was my question. I wonder if uh, while I'm wearing, I'm fine that, with the, the coffee scent. The though. coffee scent. Okay, I know, well, but I espresso is my favorite kind of coffee, so it's perfect. I, I know, it's efficient. But I'm gonna be like this, like. <laughs> You know, She's like about I'm gonna to eat your mug too. I know, I love coffee. Hey, Have a great day. <laughs>